Hello and thanks for joining us at interest.co.nz. I'm Janae Tibshirani and today I'm back with the BNZ Chair in Business in Asia at Victoria University, Professor Sia Wee Ung. Good to see you again, Sia. Good to see you again, Janine. Thanks for the invitation. Um, a new day and a new headline about the way President Trump has engaged with a world leader. Notably, Trump has made a U-turn on his previous stance and affirmed the One China policy, which recognises Taiwan as a part of China. Yet while Trump has appeared to bow to China's wishes on this issue, there's still question marks over whether he'll upset the apple cart by slapping a duty on Chinese imports to America. So Sia, as tensions escalate between the world's two superpowers, I'd like to talk about where New Zealand fits into that picture. Mm. Can we maintain a good relationship with both China and America when they are sort of bickering with each other? Now, um, a simple answer is yes. Right? I think the challenge here is to try to maintain sort of a balance between those two. And in fact, if you actually look at the world order that's been happening here, right? So mm -hmm. if we think about the stock and the flow of goods and services, right? The United States is the, actually the largest economy in the world, so we know they have the biggest stock of everything. In fact, they are also the largest importer in the world. We'll come back to that a bit later. Okay. Now, China is the number two largest uh, importer in the world as well, but it has got a lot of a lot more flow. Mm -hmm. So last year alone is actually contributing to about one third of the world's growth. So that's the challenge there, right? So we are balancing a superpower, two superpowers, one that has a very big stock and the other one has a very big flow, right? Mm. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they will conflict because we trade with them slightly different things and China is shifting a lot of their sort of their goods and services uh, mixture around as well so it's not impossible but politically I think there will be a bit of a challenge because with Trump taking over there's always going to be like a, a sort of a very difficult situation to understand what is his stand in terms of the political wise mm. right he's a very economic person so we know that part and economic sense then doesn't make sense for the United States and China to be against each other in fact we as the rest of the world actually needs them to work together Sure. Okay, look, just you, you mentioned the fact that we have a different type of relationship with China and um, America. Can you just expand on that a bit and explain how? Now, um, so, I mean, if you go back to the um, sort of the, the way it's been organised, right? So a lot of these activities that we have been engaging around uh, the world has been following the developed country model. So, I mean, you know, if the Aussies do something or if the Americans do something, we, are, we tend to follow, mm. right? But just think about one example, right? The AI IB about uh, a couple of years back, you know, when China actually asked a lot of Western countries to join, right? Uh, the Aussies actually didn't join, right? The Canadians didn't join, right? But New Zealand was one of the first country to join, right? So in, in some ways, we are actually not uh, choosing between the two parties. We are choosing the matter of fact, right? The matter of fact is that New Zealand is actually part of Asia. We have to play Asia. And if China is more into Asia, especially in the economic sense, then we have to play it. Mm. Now, uh, as to the extent to which America is playing a lot uh, of economic terms with Asia or not, we don't know. But politically, they are actually very close to Asia. Right, and that's the, a lot of historical uh, things around that as well. So there's slight difference between the the way we have been dealing with China, less politically so, more economically so. Yes. Okay. Mm. Do you see us drawing closer to either China or America as um, their sort of relationship bet between the two superpowers kind of unfold and, and develop? You know, like I always want to make a joke out of this, right? Since Donald Trump take over, everyone is running towards China mm. because you have a comparison, right? I mean, there, there's some, some challenges here. We know, you know, China is a very difficult market and then we all of a sudden feels that now America could be even be more difficult, right? It yes. was never going to be that easy anymore. We know that there will be some challenges, of course, uh, looking forward. Uh, everyone is running towards China, mm. but that doesn't mean that they haven't been into China. Everyone is with China because we have been evolving into this system whereby China is actually contributing to the world's growth. And that's where my uh, mm. argument about stock and flow comes in, mm. right? Uh, the stock is always going to be United States for mm. a while to come, at least 10, 15, 20 years before China can sort of overtake as a larger stock of goods and services. Yeah. But flow-wise, China has been doing the kind of contribution that they have been for for 20 years now. So well, What do you mean by flow? Sorry? Flow means growth, yep. right? So 10%, 9%, 8%, 7%, now 6.7% is mm -hmm. going to slowly 
come down to six, and mm-hmm. then maybe the next uh, by the end of the next decade will be about five percent. So these are actually the gro- the flow, the flow in terms of extra growth, okay. not just the stock, right? So the United States has been growing about two to three, so it's been more more stable. So mm-hmm. in terms of the flow is lesser, mm-hmm. in terms of the stock is bigger. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, look, so we're all running to China now, as, as you're saying. Um, this is the discussion that's being had, but New Zealand has also the, the government's talked a lot about. Uh, diversification and the importance of Southeast Asia for our uh, trade relations. How do you think the tensions between the US and China will will affect the relationships we have and and we're developing with the likes of the Philippines and Vietnam and, and some of these other Asian countries? Um, no, I, I don't think it would necessarily affect our relationships with other countries, right? I think it's so hard to say that we can actually move out of the United States as well. I mean, mm. it's still the largest economy in the world. Uh, you have to bear with it, right? It's the same that we would say about China. China is a difficult market, but MNCs, right? If you call yourselves a multinational enterprise, you have to be there. Mm. Right now, it's the same for most other organizations. Right, if you think that you are multinational organizations like Michael Hill and so on, you have mm. to be there. Mm. Right, and and that was one of the main reasons why Michael Hill was in the United States anyway, in North America space. Right, so so I don't necessarily think that there's always going to be a diversification effect. We tend to do that that kind of discussion a lot because we want to believe that when there's a difficult market, we walk away. Now, we, are, we should ask the question at the end of the day, which one of them is not a difficult market? Mm. Everyone is a very difficult market on its own mm. for different reasons, right? Some are very difficult to understand in terms of politics. Others are very difficult to understand in terms of regulations. Others have languages, issues. Mm. Uh, some industries are blocked, so you can't even enter. So there are always going to be difficulties for any organisation, New Zealand organisations mm. in any country. Okay, the, the difficulty as well, though, the, the talk is, is that, you know, um, we're not going to have these multilateral trade agreements, they'll be more bilateral. So uh, while it is easier to sort of, you know, lump a bunch of countries together and have trade agreements, um, now we're sort of having to work more harder individually. Yep, I, I think yeah. we are always going to head in this direction. I think there's a lot of challenges trying to believe that over time globalisation will make all countries equal or about the same level, or understanding the same, right? It's never going to be the same, right? Just mm-hmm. if you think in terms of large countries, I mean, barring the United States, you know, with, uh, you know, 751 states inside there, if you think about the provinces in China, in India, in, 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 in Indonesia, they are mm. all very different, right? They have slightly different rules and regulations. They mm. speak different local languages, right? They have different engagements, different thinking, different practices, different time that they start work, so they don't start work at the same time. Right, literally, some mm. have more breaks in the lunchtime, some have less breaks. So, so it's always going to be different even within country, large countries, let alone sure. across countries. So it's so very difficult. Right? I always ask, uh, I always do this question, uh, I always give this example right, in my class. Right? I ask the question, how come all the um, uh, you know, electricity output, uh, the plugs, they are always going to be very different. Mm. Why is it the case that we can't have one for the rest for, for yeah. the whole world, yeah. right? And that's because there are uh, still the maintenance of being uh, an individual country, nationalistic yes. about it, and so we are actually sort of conforming to groups rather than conforming the fact that I mm. think the world will be globalized. So I think at the end of the day, when you start to realize that different countries have different expectations, then it, we will actually devolve back. Take, take one step back and actually starts to think about bilaterals, which is what is happening now. Sure. Okay. So shift in thinking um, necessary then as well, you know, because all our everything was geared towards globalisation. So this is the challenge that we're facing. Yeah. yeah. But it's also can I add one more point yeah. that I think it is interesting because in the concept of my understanding as a perspective from a business person, we know business alliances are very difficult, mm. right? Between two parties, let alone multi parties, mm. right? And of course, in that sense, we always want to believe that multilateral uh, sort of free trade agreements will work be- because we believe that we almost to the extent that we believe that it will always work that we don't have exit cross, right? Yes. Just as Brexit, I mean, we know the answer there. But if you think about forming alliances between between companies, normally you will have to have exit cross because there's always a case and many, many cases, in fact, 70 to 80 percent of uh, agreements tends to fail at the firm level. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> right. So, so maybe we don't need to be too um, worried about where things are heading. No, yeah. I, don't, I don't think we should be worried because the world is never going to be flat, I believe, mm. but maybe others will disagree with it. But I think okay. if we actually totally agree that we 
you know, the world will never be flat, then, you know, we should be happy with the fact that we are all diverse. Mm. We should actually celebrate that and, and because then we learn a lot more and then we understand a lot more. Sure. So, yeah, on a slightly um, different issue, do you think Donald Trump will actually follow through with a lot of the calls he's making, particularly in regards to China? So he's already made a U-turn on the One China policy. Do you think he'll actually follow through with some of those um, duties on, on imports? Um, I, I, I don't think so, right? So I think, I think if we think about who he is and what he has been saying, you know, since uh, almost like almost a year ago now, and, you know, you can almost uh, interpret all, whatever that he says is like pushing the boundaries. So I take it that he's actually putting an extreme, like a 40% tax on import goods and so on and so forth, on China and so on and so mm. forth. Uh, I can't see that happening. If you ask me, I would say that you can trust probably 30% of what he says. Yeah. Right? The, I mean, the reality is that the control variables, the environment, the system, it's not a family business as we know. Mm. Right? Uh, it's always going to have a lot of blockage everywhere. Yes. Right? It's going to slow down and everything. It's not, it's not a family business that you can say, say look, let's do this today mm. and it's done. There's mm. no such thing. We are talking about systems here, right? Uh, national system and international systems that you have to bypass. So, so I would only want to believe that 30% of the time it will be true. He's probably yes. testing the waters by having, you know, talk about Taiwan. And then, of course, when China comes back and say you can't do that, they say, oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, and, and just an, another thing. Your colleague at Victoria University, Robert Ayson, made an interesting um, comment that he, he, he believed that New Zealand was quite comfortable being in Asia, largely due to America's presence there. What do you make of that? Do you agree? Uh, I'm not too sure what that would imply, maybe politically, but like yes. I said before, we are more used to the system whereby New Zealand is actually closer to the developed country mm. rather than the Asian economies, right? So, and, and you see, but if you think about geographical location, we are actually closer to the Asian economies uh, in terms of economic terms, mm. right? So, so I don't, I don't think necessarily think that we won't play around with Asia economies just because the Americans are not here. That would be weird, mm. and that would be not very smart to do it as well because okay. we are part of. Asia Pacific. Yes. Okay. All right. So, yeah, look, thank you so much for, for that. Always interesting to hear your insights. And, mm. I mean, with the world changing at the pace that it is, it's, it's good to, to catch up. So, thank you for that. Thanks, and, Jean. And um, I'm Janae Tibshirani from interest.co.nz.